Hello everyone and welcome to the presentation of the EPIC project. EPIC is an Erasmus Plus strategic partnership. It means improving employability through internationalization and collaboration. And the presenter today, it's me. I am Jens Mjør Pedersen, Associate Professor at Aalborg University and the Project Coordinator for the EPIC project. The objectives of EPICs um, are multiple. One is to increase employability through closer collaboration between students and industry and to actually make students work on products which come from the industry and in collaboration with industrial supervisors. It is to promote the cooperation between industry and academia, also through the, the education and, and products together. It is to prepare the students for both national and international job. And that uh, means that they have to work together with students from other disciplines, uh, students from other countries, because this is what you do um, in the working life as well. Then to improve the quality of the teaching methods, because we try to do innovative teaching and we try especially to explore the, the room between physical and virtual learning spaces. And then it is to enhance the international collaboration in a scalable and sustainable way and to give the students uh, transversal competences. Um, it is also a highly experimental setup and we hope that, uh, that you will also want to be part of it and that you will also want to try out uh, new methods after having uh, seen the presentation here and learned more about the project. I would also say that this is the first presentation. We have a multiple presentation of the different intellectual outputs that have been produced during the project. The project partners, I will not go through all of them, but basically it is uh, universities from all over Europe and then it is companies from Germany and companies from Spain. And in the last year of the project, we've also had a very close collaboration with, um, with University of Brasilia in Brazil and with some organizations in Brazil. So EPIC is really all about, not food, but all about bringing students together and having students working together. And this is one picture from a group of the EPIC students who were together in a seminar, I think it was in Barcelona, but here are students from Poland, from Denmark, from Turkey and from the Netherlands who are working in Spain, who are working on the same project. Um, EPIC is also very much about student driven and having students to drive the projects. Um, so it's, uh, it's very uh, engaging and, and student led. And basically the students have the responsibilities for their own projects, but of course we we, uh, we are helping them out. In a typical EPIC project, what will happen is that the students will choose their products. Uh, I will try to point. The students will choose their products um, by the end of November or beginning of December. And then uh, we have already prepared a number of student products. Uh, these products are, are prepared together with companies and I will show a few examples afterwards. Um, then we assign the students to the products and the way we assign the students to the products is that uh, each product should have students from at least two countries working together. Um, then we enter a preparation phase and this is one of the, the things that have been a little bit challenging is that we need to be quite flexible because schedules are different in different universities. And uh, one of the design goals of EPIC was also that we did not want to, uh, to, have to make, you can say, special rules for EPIC. So we want something that, that works within the existing frameworks in the participating universities because otherwise it is not scalable and uh, otherwise it cannot be, uh, uh, be uh, spread more widely. So that, that is one of the difficult constraints that we decided to work with them. Then after the preparation, in the preparation phase, basically we have a number of online modules that the students are following. And at the same time, they are also preparing for their specific topic. Then we have a seminar in February and by the time we have the seminar in February, all the students have actually started to work on the projects, but they can be a, diff a bit in different places. So some students would have been in the very beginning and this would be the first activity of that project. And for other students, they would have been working already on, uh, on the project for maybe a month or maybe a few weeks. But in the seminar, it's basically five full days where the students get together, we try to facilitate um, a, a good uh, setting up good collaborations, helping the students defining the, the goals and the, the plans for their products and also get started on the content of their products. Um, this uh, seminar is uh, physical, it is face to face and we uh, our experience is that it's quite, cru quite crucial 
part of the learning experience that they actually get together. Because after they have been together for a week, it is much easier to go into the virtual collaboration phase where they work together phys- uh, virtually for the rest of the product time. Uh, we did here include also a possibility for an additional meeting um, that was done a little bit differently in the different, uh, in the different groups. But it meant that all the groups had a possibility to meet one more time. In the last year, this was not possible due to the COVID-19 situation. So here, basically, it was only the virtual collaboration we had, but it worked pretty well. And when it comes to June, uh, they have to hand in the joint EPIC report and the, the, product, uh, the report they have made, uh, especially for this project. And then uh, all the students also have to make a local product hand in which is really done according and, and a local exam or product defense. And those parts, the, the local hand-in and local defense, is again done according to the, to the guidelines and rules of the individual universities. So the students are also graded from their home university and not as part of the EPIC project, you can say. But this is again because uh, this reduces the complexity of the product and it makes it more scalable because we don't have all the universities to agree on a common way of doing it or uh, to follow the regulations of a single university that might not be fully recognized in other universities. This also means that the duration of the product work actually varies a little bit between the universities. It wasn't too big of a problem, but it's important to be aware of. Also that even within the same product, you can have some students which are starting at a little bit different times and you have some students which are finishing also at different times. Um, however, there is more to it than just this cycle. So I'm not go through the slide here in details, but just say that actually we have a quite a large planning phase where we set up the products in collaboration between the universities and companies and define the good products that we think are good for the students, uh, that provide good learning for the students, but at the same time are relevant for the companies. Uh, in the last year, we did this with a, 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 jo- a joint framework. So all the student products were supporting the sustainable development goals, which made, you can say, a red line uh, through, uh, through all the different products. And we found that to be a big help also during the seminar that students could actually see how the different products were fitting together. Then we have the preparation where we actually prepare the different seminars and training materials for students and staff. Uh, before we go ahead with the um, with the seminar, then we have the the product work um, that we already mentioned, and then we have evaluation and reflection and, pre- and preparation of dissemination in the end. And the evaluation part is really an important part of the product here because it is so experimental. That uh, also means that we have it's been important to pick up the experiences and try to revise it. We have done this for two years, and every year we have tried to revise it according to the experiences we got. It's all documented in the um, in the reports from the different years, which can also be found on the EPIC website. So just to give an idea about what kind of uh, products we were doing, they were all fitting within the sustainable development goals. These are the products from the last year. And the last year was also the year where we uh, invited students from University of Brasilia to take part of the collaboration. So even if they were not officially part of EPIC and even if they were not funded by the EPIC project, they were still part of the collaboration. And that gave some very, very good, I think, products, for example, the IoT, how to use IoT in garbage collection in order to improve the the life of waste pickers in Brazil, Um, uh, mobile education also for waste pickers in in Brazil or in Brasilia was also one of these uh, projects. Um, another one with the Brazilian participants was the Rural Waste Plastics Recovery, which was uh, special because it was multiple groups. So we had a lot of students involved, 10 students, but they were split into smaller groups working on particular aspects of the problem. Uh, what is joined for all the problems that the students were working on is that the students from different universities participated and that there was also a company involved. In principle, we would say that either a company was involved or research products were involved, but in practice, it was mainly together with companies. The students um, have evaluated it very positively. 
uh, on a scale from one to five, we uh, we get an average score of four point six in terms of the evaluation of if, if Epic has been a good experience. It also means that 96% of the students actually found that it was a 4 or 5 on that scale. And when it comes to the usefulness of the product, if Epic will help in the future education career and make the students better prepared for the international labor market, then more than half of the students gave it a 5 and more than 75% of the students were scoring these points with a 4 or 5. And we have much more elaborate statistics which are also available on the Epic website. Um, the students also uh, did not only evaluate, of course, uh, uh, quantitatively, but also gave uh, some qualitative feedback. Uh, some of the feedback we got was from like, uh, the statements that you can see here, which were very positive. But what is even better is that we have also started to hear from students who were involved in EPIC and who were involved in previous projects before EPIC, which, where we also focused on international collaboration. Where they, were, where they have been describing how the positive participation in these projects have helped them in order to find, uh, find, uh, find relevant jobs. And for example, uh, I recently got one from one of the Polish students who participated in the, um, in the second year of EPIC, who also got, uh, got a job based on both the skills he achieved in terms of language collaboration but also specifically in working in cybersecurity. And that is, of course, really what we want to achieve is that we help our students in order to, uh, to be more employable. So that's very nice to hear. You can learn more and you can download all of our outputs from the EPIC website, epic.edu.edu.tr. Um, and here in this uh, YouTube channel and on the website, you can also find presentations of uh, the other intellectual outputs. So we have made a two or three minute video for each of the intellectual outputs. So um, thank you so much for listening and I hope that you will benefit from the work that we have been doing in the EPIC project and that our experiences can also be useful for you. Thank you.